Thank you for tuning in to Mastering Mayhem. We are going to go ahead and install the PRX rack system right here on this wall for the customer. All right, so these are most of the boxes here. We're going to go ahead and unbox. All right, so we have everything pretty much unboxed right now. You can see the two main posts here. Uh, and then these are the two bars that will be mounted onto the wall in the studs, right? And then these are the four arms that will go from these bars and attach to the red posts. And this is the pull up lap bar, all that at the top that will connect the uh, two red posts up there. This is an additional exercise or like an accessory that's gonna go on this wall if we can get it there. And I'll show you the tools that uh, I highly recommend that you have if you're gonna do this. And then this is a bench that's gonna be attached to the wall as well. It'll be able to lift up and stay against the wall. You get squats out of it, pull-ups, uh, bench press, you know, you get some of the main workouts and it takes up very little space when you push it up against the wall. And I'll show you guys how that's done. So here are the tools that I highly, highly recommend that you have on hand. I got a Pittsburgh set, deep impact set, right? Mine goes all the way up to 32. But you gotta make sure you have some bigger deep sockets for those bigger, huge nuts that come with this, the lock nuts. Make sure you have a combination wrench set to be able to hold uh, one side of a, a bolt and that, that helps you to keep one side tight while you're tightening on the other side with your impact wrench. And then I like to always have impact drill or two if possible. So you can see I have three drills here. That way I can have like a Phillips head or a deep socket key on it, right? On, on one impact wrench. Then the other one I can put the drill bit and the other one will have some other, uh, you know, like a Phillips bit or whatever it is for the smaller uh, hardware pieces that I need to install. Definitely have a nice pair of channel lock pliers. Don't have to be huge, but something to be able to hold on to, uh, you know, harder to reach uh, places. And then yeah, you guys are probably gonna see this in every single video I make as far as my DIYs because this guy is great. I use this almost every time I do some sort of installation or assembly. Highly recommend it. I'll put the links to everything you see here and what I recommend for these kinds of jobs, all right? And then I always like to have a knee pad. You can get this at Harbor Freight, just as well as those wrench set and the uh, deep impact set there. Tape measure for sure, a level for sure. And my other favorite next to this guy, stud finder. The stud buddy you can't beat this guys and I'm, you'll see in the video how it works actually i'll just give you a quick preview there's always going to be a stud around a power outlet it's either on the right side or the left side because power box the blue box behind the wall has to attach to the stud somewhere so it's either here or here so you just move your stud buddy across the wall boom and it finds the nail every single time or screw whatever they use stud buddy's awesome i'll just leave it there and then this is the main hardware uh, bag here for this main center unit, which you'll see come together. And it looks like PRX Performance sends you a sticker, uh, some sort of banner, and they sent, you get two of them, I guess, depending on whatever you get. And then you get the instruction manual. I guess this is it. It's only a few pages long, not much to it. Real simple in my estimation. Oh wow, they put the staple in the bottom right corner, interesting. So let's go ahead and do it. If there's anything out of place or out of the ordinary, um, I'll let you know, but I've done a few of these, so it usually goes pretty smoothly. Okay, so the first step is attaching the wall brackets. Uh, and as you can see here, it gives you the measurements exactly where you need to have them as far as height wise. So this bottom bracket where you're gonna drill that hole needs to be 19 inches from the floor. The top bracket here is showing you it needs to be 94 inches center of the hole for the bracket, right? Not the top of the bracket or the bottom of the bracket, but the actual hole needs to be 94 inches there. And then it shows you make sure you have the top hook facing down. So let's go ahead and get these guys uh, assembled or on the wall. Then we can actually start assembling and attaching the red posts to these two bars here. All right, I don't know if you all saw in the hyperlapse if uh, that I used the bottom bar 
to kind of guide me and show me where the studs are. Basically, you use that bottom bar to give you an idea where the 48 inches uh, gap of the studs would be, but you mark the, remember the center of this hole has to be 19 inches, and I already used the bar. I lifted it up to the wall. Furthest left and right holes go right over the two marks, right? So the next most important thing is when we install this, it has to be level with those holes being at 19 inches, which they are. So make sure you level this bar or else it's gonna tweak out the red posts and it's gonna be skewed. Now, some garage floors are a little slanted and they have a drop off for, for drainage, but that little slant can be adjusted by putting something underneath the, the one post, uh, you know, a little shim or whatever, and you'll be fine. Is I'm gonna pre-drill the holes, and then I, you just basically install one side first, install the other, and then securely tighten it down to the wall. And I'll show you all how to do that All right, so this is why I love my skill, green laser. I bought this tripod for it too, which is awesome because it can go up to the ceiling and you don't need the tripod if you use the floor and the ceiling too and it has a few more extension rods. But anyway, that's a whole nother thing. Uh, but definitely my skill laser is awesome. That's why I did show you guys the deal on it. But this is to show you guys how helpful it is too because now I have the laser here and perfect level line. Basically, we're gonna put this bar level, but the ground and this red post is probably gonna be off the floor, basically that gap right there once we're all said and done. And so that's where you would just put a little shim underneath there. Just wanna show you why I love this skill laser level with the green light. It works perfectly during the daytime. I don't have any issues. And uh, it helps for me having to hold a bubble level, which I, don't, I always have a bubble level there but this is just makes it easier to be able to use both hands and you have your line there and you're good to go. All right, sorry, I didn't hyperlapse when I was drilling because I, again, sometimes I forget to hit record. I drilled the whole center on the laser line there and then the same with this one here. Drill the center and I measured exactly from hole to hole, even of the drilled, where it's center, it's 48 inches. So you wanna make this 48 inches as, as close and as exact as possible. And then they're, both holes are 19 inches off the floor. But in the instruction, it says the most important measurement or the most important spacing that you want to get within a quarter of an inch is the space between the bottom bar, this bottom bar that's going to go here, and the top bar. The space between the bottom bar and the top bar is the most important to get a proper you know, functioning system here when you're all said and done. So pre-drill the holes uh, with 3 sixteenths three sixteenths of an inch drill bit and it says you have to go in two and a half inches my drill bit is actually from here to here is two and a half inches in length so i just drilled all the way into the stud and now that is ready to receive the lag bolts all right with this prx system you get exactly eight lag screws and eight small washers these will stand apart from all the other hardware pieces which are humongous but so you're gonna put four lag screws in each bar, right? I only pre-drilled two to get everything level and then we'll pre-drill the other two in the center of the bar at 16 inches. Let's go ahead and get these lag screws uh, and the bar in place. All right, now we're gonna get the other two lag bolts in these holes. All right, so this bottom bar is securely attached right now. The important part is that the gap from this guy to the top bar that I'm about to install is no more than a quarter of an inch difference from the measurement that we need. And the measurement that we need between those two, from here, the center of the hole, from the top bar to the bottom bar, has to be within a quarter of an inch of 75 inches. All right, so now I got my skill laser pointing right here, where the laser is going right through the center of that top of the bolt right there. So now it should be following the stud and we just need to measure 75 inches from the center of that lag bolt head to there on that green line. 75 inches exactly. Use a laser if you have one. Just makes it easier to make it a more exact fit because if you're off by too much, it makes the functionality of the equipment difficult to work with. Not impossible, but it makes it more difficult. All right, so as you can see here, we got 
the first bolt in place for the top bar. So I took my tape measure from the bottom here all the way up and marked it at 75 and a quarter inch center of the hole. That way it's 75 inches center to center. And now we're gonna go to the other side with the laser, lined up this bolt all the way up at 75 and a quarter up there. And then we'll have the two brackets on the wall. And then we're gonna, before I tighten everything down finally, I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna use my laser to show that they are evenly, they are exactly the same place on the side of the plate here, down below and on the above one. Okay, so here's, again, another really, excuse me, another really great thing about the laser, as you can see here on this bottom bracket, it's not in the middle, it's more to the right than it is to the middle, all right? So I wanted to match the laser the same way at the top here. I don't know if my hand gets in the way, but if you can see it, same thing. The laser is more to the right of the face of this bracket than it is in the center. So we're good to go, maybe another tap. Right there, and that's gonna line up. So now if everything's where it needs to be, we should be completely good on this side because it lines up here really, really well. And it's exactly from the bottom of this bolt to the bottom of the other bolt. So everything's lining up right now. Let's check out the left side. And if everything's good there, we'll get the final two lag bolts in this top one and we can start assembling. But yeah, you see the little bit of a belly here on this wall. That belly is there. This two by four here probably came out a bit when there was, uh, the, you know, the wall was being put up. But anyway, that won't affect anything. Uh, this guy will still function just fine. So, all right, let's get the left side squared away. And then we'll make sure that this is level too. And we will go from there. We'll, start, we'll, we'll actually start assembling, getting these huge bolts and uh, lock nuts in place with the plastic washers. Okay, so one last time, this tripod with Skill Laser has helped me immensely. I mean, to line everything up exactly where it needs to be, just to have a smooth, smooth and seamless operation and function. And now it's ready to receive these two beasts of the arms with the, sorry, the two red posts with the hydraulic arms here that swivel. So you know, the entire mechanism can drop and then lift up against the wall. But there you go, we got the two brackets on the wall. Let's get these two red posts in place and I'll just time lapse that and then I'll show you what I did after that, okay? Follow the tips and the instructions, of course. Now they're showing you how to assemble the arms, the hydraulic arms to the brackets that are on the wall. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna try to give you like a close up uh, of the bottom ones because they're all going to be the same. All four sides are exactly the same. So I'll do a time lapse with the first three and then the bottom right one I'll do a close up. Okay, so here's what you want to do with every arm, right? You want to make sure this portion that goes in is on the inside of the bracket or the, yeah, the wall bracket. Make sure the hydraulic is on the outside. And the way you put the hardware together, let me just show you real quick. You take the bolt, get the outside washer, put it on. Then you gotta make sure you get this plastic washer between the main bracket and the swinging arm or the hinging arm, right there between them. That keeps the metal from rubbing against each other. And I take the bolt, push it through, through that plastic washer there, and then you take Another washer here, and you just hand tighten the lock nut. That's the order you want it in. So all the swinging arms are with the portion that comes inward is on the inside of the main bracket short arms there, you know? So they all come inward, and that's the way it gets set up. You definitely get a uh, adjustable wrench here, so you can hold the bolts when you um, use your impact driver to tighten these guys up. And again, you don't want to over tighten it. Once it's all assembled, then I, what I do is I'll lift it and drop it and see how it, how it behaves and it should be a pretty smooth operation. These are all tightened down 
And again, you got that little plastic washer in there. You wanna make sure there's that gap. And tightening these down, you don't wanna tighten them, over tighten them because then this guy won't swing up and down freely, right? See how the bolt and the nut spin a little bit as I raise and lower the, the hydraulic bar here? That's all you wanna do. You wanna tighten it to where it doesn't go left or right. All right, let's go ahead and attach the two red posts and get this thing done. Okay, so now I laid down the multi-grip bar and put the uprights right next to it because basically we're just gonna put the two bolts and nuts on the bottom of the multi-grip bar uh, uh, and then the top ones are gonna get the bolts after we get it up so we can get the linkage arms on there. But let's go ahead, I'm gonna just do it in hyperlapse, getting the bolts through and getting this guy attached together then I'm gonna lift it up and so on and so forth. It is time to lift it up and get it standing and get it attached to the arms, the linkage arms. So let's go ahead and do that and watch me struggle. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is get the bolts at the top of the multi-grip bar and linkage arms. We're gonna get it all together and remember, put that plastic washer in between the linkage arm and the upright. One thing I forgot to mention, these upper ones are actually five inches long, whereas all the other ones are four inches long because this one's going through the linkage arm plus the multi-grip bar. Okay, so for the final linkage arm, I'm just gonna show you guys how to do it. So again, I always put a washer here and it's gonna go up here at the third hole. So you want to come from the outside in. Do not forget this plastic washer. It goes on the linkage arm. And remember, it goes right in here. It fits in perfectly. And you're going to go on number one, two, three hole here. It's going to slide that in. And it starts to fall into place. Adjust it till the hole lines up. And you grab your four and a half inch hex bolt. Just kind of maneuver it a little bit to get it through. Remember, this is, this is heavy stuff, so get it through right there. Get your washer on the other side. Get this into place, just like that. Hand tighten for now. All right, so we are getting to the final moments here. We just need to attach the hydraulic mechanisms. They're all exactly the same. So hopefully I got a better angle this time, but basically you need a half inch open end wrench and you just take the bolt that's already on here, flange bolt. You have to lift the rack to the wall in order to be able to get it in the hole. Uh, and if you did measure everything properly, it should go right in no problem. And then just tighten it, hand tighten it. Take your open end wrench, hold it right here. Give it a small impact gun. That's how it sits up against the wall, out of the way. It's a beautiful machine. Let's see if I can take it out the wall. Just like that. Kind of go under. I look at it nice and easy. It's actually really light, and then sometimes the bottom still sticks out, so you gotta just kind of push it against the wall. Okay, once you're done installing the bench and everything's the way it should be, it should be real easy to lift this guy up. Unless you pull it and uh, you know start the motion to come down, it'll stay up on the wall just fine. Now we are gonna move on to the accessories. The uh, pieces that are going to be used to use the uh, bench press bar and then we're gonna add the, anyway, the pieces that hold the weight plates on the wall and the two brackets I'm gonna just put onto the uprights right now. Arm brackets are in place. So we're gonna find the stud and then drill five holes for the five lag bolts. All right, so now the plate 
rack, I guess the plate holding rack is in place. All right, so the last piece of equipment that this customer ordered is called the, I didn't know what it was called, the PRX wall mounted landmine bar storage, right? So it's gonna store this guy right here. You can barely see it with the bench bar. So we're gonna install it basically right there. You already see my stud buddy. It's basically two lag bolts on this bottom piece, right? This piece right here is gonna go right level with the stud via two lag bolts. And then we'll attach the rest of them with hex bolts and a pin. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so this last part is you take this piece right here, a middle connector, which will allow it to swivel left and right and up and down when you're done. So just put that guy in the middle, grab your hex head bolt, just like that. Just get the nut and screw it down, and screw it on at the bottom. And then get this guy here with this piece facing up. All right, just slide this, run it through. And again, I think it's short, but this is how they did it. And this is a size 24 for all these bigger um, bolts and nuts that I've been working with. should come up and lock into place. That's the one I will use. There's a safety pin right there. Just like that. And I'll show you how the bar goes in there. But that's basically what it is. And then you can use it to work out. That's pretty much it. All right, y'all, we are done. Everything is good to go. The bench is attached to the wall, nice and secure in the studs. The entire squat rack system is securely attached to the studs as well. The weight plate bracket with the arms are securely attached with the five lag bolts, nice and secure holding that weight. And then we have the landmine holding the bar and you can adjust the multi bar there to come down, but you're gonna need two more of the big hex bolts here in order to do that because you gotta have these bolts up here to hold the arms that keep uh, the two uprights in place. So it can be done. You can take the multi bar up and down. You just need to have two extra bolts and I'm pretty sure PRX Performance will send it to you. All right, so thanks for uh, tuning in to Mastery Mayhem. I hope this video helped encourage you to know that you yourself can assemble and install this all on your own and if you did find the video helpful and encouraging to you know where you can install it yourself please remember to show your support by liking sharing commenting uh, clicking the notification bell because more videos will be coming out on a daily basis if i can and please subscribe if you have not yet subscribed so until next time i'm always going to be looking for the best tools uh, tech deals and diys for you and uh, as always i only hope all the best to you and yours Oh,